thousands of new wonders and hidden secrets. It's all about witnessing the paths you have never stepped before and knowing that the story of the making of a legacy. Introducing the key personality of the day, Dr. Rohan Pethiagudar, a biodiversity expert, the naturalist who conferred the Linian Medal for Zoology 2022 by the Linian Society of London. He is the first ever Sri Lankan to receive this prestigious medal. Dr. Pethiagudar is an author, educator, taxonomist and leading researcher on conservation of freshwater fish diversity in Sri Lanka and once served as the deputy chair of the IUCN Species Survival Commission. He has contributed greatly in highlighting the very history of biodiversity in Asia, linking together scientists, artists, travelers and explorers in both East and West. His impact on biodiversity research in Sri Lanka and beyond through his output and catalytic influence is truly a significant one. It's time to begin the story of insight. Take a moment, come walk with us into the forest's blessed abode to see the wondrous beauty the earth has bestowed through the eyes of naturalist. Good evening, everyone. Nature is where all our roots of life are embedded, allowing the living to survive and prosper. There are only a few dedicated souls in this world who are true naturalists that always try to take a step forward in protecting mother nature while feeling its beauty. This evening, we are ready to inspire all of you with one of the greatest naturalists in Sri Lanka. This personality is a foremost biodiversity expert and naturalist and the first Sri Lankan who conferred the Linian Medal for Zoology, making a legacy in 2022. He is none other than Dr. Rohan Petyagoda. Hence, we at BASE, the official club affiliated with the Department of Zoology and Environment Sciences are ready to unfold the story of the making of a legacy in collaboration with Botsok, the official club affiliated with the Department of Plant Sciences and the FOSS, the official media unit of Faculty of Science. First and foremost, to welcome all of you to this event, I cordially invite the President of Peace, Ms. Vihanga Amarukan. Over to you, Ms. Vihanga. It's a privilege to voice myself in a legendary moment life story to an audience full of welcome, Dr. Rohan Petyagoda, our guest speaker today. Sir, it's a huge privilege to have you with us. And we highly appreciate you accepting our invitation amidst your busy schedule. Next, Professor Devaka Virakon from the Department of Zoology of Colombo. Sir, it's a great pleasure to witness a session moderated by you, and we highly appreciate your cooperation in organizing this event. It is my greatest pleasure to welcome the Dean of the Faculty of Science of University of Colombo, Senior Professor Upu Sonnadara. Sir, you have always been very supportive in the events organized by our student societies and your presence today is of huge importance to us. I would like to gratefully welcome the head of the Department of Zoology and Environment Sciences, Senior Professor Preeti Udagama, and the head of the Department of Plant Sciences, Dr. Hashendra Katriarachi, to this event, and we always admire the guidance you offer to us. I would like to extend a warm welcome to the Senior Treasurer of Bees, Professor Inok Pereira, 
Senior Treasurer of WhatsApp, Dr. Anushka Vikram Surya, and the advisor for Fox Media, Dr. Hiran Shaivira. Also, my heartiest welcome goes to all the academic staff members from all the departments and the faculties of University of Colombo. Your participation is of huge respect to us. I should remind of the hard underlying work of the executive committee members of the three clubs who are collaboratively organizing this event, the Bees, the Botsock, and FOSS Media. Thank you all too for this gracious moment. And finally, all the students from University of Colombo and other universities and all the nature enthusiasts joining with us today. It's a great pleasure to have you all here with us. I hope you all will have a pleasant time with a lot of great ideas and insights to be added to your life to upgrade the nature enthusiast and the curious experience within you. Cheers for another more. Thank you, Ms. Vihanga. Without further ado, let's move on to the most awaited portion of this event, the discussion with our guest speaker, Dr. Ruhan Petyagoda. But before we start, let me share some kind reminders with our audience. Since there are lots of multilingual participants who have joined via Zoom and live FB, the webinar will be conducted in the English language. Due to the high number of participants, it's difficult to allow all of you to ask questions by unmuting yourselves so that if you do have any questions to ask Dr. Rohan Petyagoda, please direct them via the chat box to the person who has renamed as questions. And the participants who have joined via live FB can direct your questions from the comment section. They'll be directed to Dr. Petyagoda during the Q&A session. To moderate today's discussion, we have Senior Lecturer Professor Devaka Virakon from the Department of Zoology and Environment Sciences, who is also a very good friend of Dr. Rohan Petyagoda. Professor Devaka Virakon graduated from the University of Colombo in 1985 with a major in zoology. He joined the Department of Zoology, University of Colombo, as a probationary lecturer in 1986. He received a full graduate scholarship in 1988 to study in the USA, where he completed his MSc and PhD at Illinois State University. In 1995, he returned to the University of Colombo, and currently he's a professor at the Department of Zoology and Environment Sciences at the University of Colombo. So now I kindly invite Professor Devika to introduce our guest speaker and to begin the most awaited discussion with Dr. Pitya Goda. The floor is open to you, sir. Thank you, Ayeshma. Uh, it is indeed a great honor and pleasure to introduce an old friend that I've known for a long, long time, Dr. Rohan Petya Goda. He was born in Colombo and educated at St. Thomas's College, Mount Lavinia. And after he finished his secondary education, he moved on to King's College, where he got his bachelor's degree in electrical and electronics engineering. And he went on to get an MPhil degree in biomedical engineering from the University of Sussex. Having completed his postgraduate work, Rohan returned to Sri Lanka and uh, he was appointed uh, as an engineer in the Division of Biomedical Engineering at the Ministry of Health, where he went on to become the director subsequently. Rohan has held many national and international posts, uh, which includes Chairman of Sri Lanka's Water Resources Board, Chairman of Sri Lanka's Tea Board, uh, and Deputy Chair of IUCN Species Survival Commission, Deputy Chair of Assurance Group of the British American Tobacco Biodiversity Partnership, Board of Trustees of the International Trust for Zoological Nomenclature, and currently he's a research associate of the Australian Museum Sydney, and he's also a senior policy advisor to the Minister uh, 
Member of Parliament, Sadi Premadasa, uh, at the moment. Uh, Rohan Petya uh, I think uh, we know him better as a naturalist. Uh, and uh, he came into the limelight in 1990 when he uh, published the book Freshwater Fishes of Sri Lanka. That is how I also got to know Rohan before I actually met him. Uh, I read his work and I was quite impressed. I think Rohan is a pioneer and an innovator. Uh, and he's also have instigated uh, research interest uh, after, if you look at the, the research on fauna, you see most of the work earlier has been done by foreign nationals. Then came the, the Sri Lankans like P.P. Dhaniagala, PhD H.D. Silva, C.H. Fernando, uh, Savitri and Nimal Gunatilaka, uh, which has enriched our knowledge about Sri Lankan fauna and flora. And Rohan comes into the limelight in 1990 with the publication of his book, Freshwater Fishes of Sri Lanka. After that, he has set uh, the Wildlife Heritage Trust, through which uh, he has published many books. And he has also provided the platform for other people to publish books on uh, Fall of Sri Lanka. Uh, and this is why I think he's an innovator, uh, because in when he published uh, the, the Freshwater Fishes of Sri Lanka, uh, it was done in a quite a different way than the, the previous editions on Sri Lankan taxa. She used a lot of colorful photographs, distribution maps, and, and uh, very descriptive uh, records of species. Uh, and also, uh, I think with that book, he also started uh, another new trend, that is uh, discovery of new species in his freshwater fishes. He describes two new species. But uh, later on, he published another paper, uh, which indicated that the amphibian fauna of Sri Lanka is much more than what we believe it was at that point of time. This led to a spate of uh, discoveries, which led to a description of more than 100 new species of vertebrates and 43 species of freshwater crabs, all of which uh, have been uh, efforts of WHT led by Rohan. And uh, Rohan's uh, influence transcends beyond Sri Lanka's border because his work on amphibians have triggered a similar interest in India, where people like Dr. Bichu has uh, done a great deal of work on Indian amphibians. So I think Rohan's influence uh, has uh, affected the entire Western Ghats region. That is uh, why I think he's a pioneer and an innovator and an instigator of, of, of research because he has created a very new trend um, in Sri Lanka. Uh, and also uh, he has uh, been uh, the editor of Loris, which transformed the old Loris into a new format, which I think is a, another masterpiece of Rohan. So Rohan has published uh, numerous uh, publications, including books, uh, and his work has been uh, uh, appreciated by the, the number of awards he has received. He has received the Rolex Awards for Enterprise and, and the prestigious uh, Linian Medal from the Linian Society. He's the only Sri Lankan to receive this award. And he's also uh, a member of the National Academy of Science in Sri Lanka. In, a, in honor of his work, many species have been named after him fishes, frogs, lizards, spiders, dragonflies, and he even has an entire genera named, uh, genus named after him, uh, Rohan Sal Salus. Uh, so Rohan not only uh, did all this by himself, uh, he has also uh, helped a number of new researchers to come up like Kalim Manamindra Arachi, Madhava Megas, Kumura, and the names uh, go on and on. So this is why I think Rohan is, is a, 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 has made a very important contribution uh, to the knowledge dissemination on, on fauna of Sri Lanka. Uh, and uh, people like Rohan are, are some, uh, somebody that we really need at this hour because we all know 
we are going through some hard times. I have lived through a lot of hard times, but I think the current situation is perhaps the worst I have seen during my lifetime. And in times like this, we need uh, hope. And Rohan is a beacon of hope, especially for aspiring young zoologists. Uh, he can maybe inspire them uh, to see beyond the difficulties we are seeing today in, in our nation and try to rise up to the current challenges we are facing. So with that introduction, let me formally welcome Rohan. Welcome Rohan uh, to the Department of Zoology and Environment Science and Bees. Uh, thank you for accepting our invitation. It's always a pleasure uh, to uh, be with you. I think you are muted, Rohan. Oh, Renata, I know that. Oh, I know. Right. So uh, thank you very much, Devaka. Very kind of you. Uh, I think I should first make it clear uh, a few corrections from the kind words you said about me. First of all, I am Mr. Rohan Petyagode, not Dr. Rohan Petyagode. Every time I start a lecture, I have to make this clarification because I'm introduced sometimes even as professor. I think a Pratirupe Tibunatami, Tama Mr. Mama. I just look like a professor. I can't help that. May... So that is one thing. The second thing I wanted to say is uh, 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 it might be a little difficult for me, but I, I suggest we conduct this discussion in English and Sinhala uh, as, as uh, seems appropriate so that uh, we can reach the maximum number of uh, our colleagues who are listening in today, if that's all right by you. It's fine with me. I, I was told that you, it was a little difficult for you to uh, uh, respond in Sinhala, so we'll, we'll try and do this bilingually. But you, but you know that I like making a fool of myself, so uh, <laughs> we can have some fun. Yes, I'm sure there's going to be a load of fun. So let us start from the beginning, Rohan. Let us, uh, I mean, as children, we all had aspirations to be somebody. I, of course, wanted to be a seafarer, but I ended up being an academic. Uh, no complaints there. What was your childhood like? What was, uh, tell us a little bit about... Uh, your times at St. Thomas's College, your aspirations as a child, what did you want to be? So I, I feel a bit embarrassed to talk about my childhood because I had a privileged childhood, to be honest. Uh, my, my father was a tea planter in, and for most of his life, he was in uh, around Talavakale and Lindula, very nice climate to live in. And uh, we used to spend our school holidays in, in that environment. He was a fisherman and those days, uh, Nobody went to Horton Plains. He was one of the few people who went and fished there regularly. So I'd go with him on some occasions. Um, so I, I don't see my childhood when I compare the, my childhood with those of the students with whom I deal with nowadays. Uh, I feel embarrassed about my childhood. That's, that's the honest truth. But I, I want to like, look at another aspect of childhood, which I think is relevant. And especially since we are dealing today with mostly with university students, I, I want to just say something about that aspect of my childhood, which I think many people don't think about. If we think about it, at the time we are born, <clears throat> we have no awareness of, of the world. Uh, like, certain curiosity that we have about from childhood we have about our world <coughs> As we grow older, that curiosity gets dampened. So as we come into adults, we think we know everything about our surroundings and we, we cease to be curious or we are less curious uh, about what's going on around us. I think we are less curious about so 
ඒක ඉක්මනටම නැතු යනවා දැන් මම හිතනවා මගේ මං දරුව දරුවේ කැටියට හිටපු කාලේ ඒ ඒක ටිකක් මට ඒ ප්‍රශ්නේ අඩු වුණා ඒ කියන්නේ මට මට ඒ මේක මම වෙන විදියකට කියනවා නම් රිචඩ් ඩෝකින්ස් නැමති විද්‍යාඥ මේකට කිව්වා ද ඇනස්තීසිය ඔෆ් ෆැමිලියරිටි කියලා ඒ කියන්නේ හුරු පුරුදු කමේ නිර්වින්දනය නිර්වින්දනය ඇනස්තටික් එකක් හැටියට අපිට මේක වැටෙනවා කියලා වී බිකම් ඇනස්තිසයිස් ටු ආ ෆැමිලියර් සරවුන්ඩින්ග්ස් අපි ඒ ගැන ප්‍රශ්න කරන්නේ අපි ලයික් අ කියුරියෝසිටි ඉස් ලොස්ට් ඉතින් මං හිතන්නේ මට ඒක උනේ නැහැ බොහෝ දුරට මං තාමත් මං අවුරුදු දැන් ඇට හත ටොකිට්ටුයි මං තාම අර පොඩි ළමයෙක් වගේ හාරනවා මට මට මේ පර්යේෂණය කියන්නේ මට මගේ ලේ වල තියෙන මගේ ඇඟේ තියෙන දෙයක් ඉතින් ඒක එකක් සෝ චයිල්ඩ්හුඩ් ඉස් අබවුට් වොස් ෆර් මී අබවුට් කියුරියෝසිටි ද සෙකන්ඩ් තින් වොස් අ නෙගටිව් තින් දේවක විච් ඉස් දැට් I was not and still am not I, this is a weakness a, a sociable person man samaj shili pudgalek nevai edat ehemai adat ehemai i think e hinda mata yalu mitru hitiye atalossai adat page sagewa arenna mage math ek parishna karna shishyan arenna mata sitina mitra sankhyawa ithamathma simithay ඒ තින් ඒක දුර්වලකමක් හැබැයි ඒක මගෙන් මට ප්‍රයෝජනයක් වුණා ඒ කියන්නේ මට තනියම ඉන්න තනියම වැඩ කරන්න පුරුදුයි කැමති මං මං හිතනවා දවසෙන් පැය 12ක් විතර මේ කාමරේ ඇතුළ මං ඉන්නේ මගේ බිරිඳ ඇරෙන්න මේ කාමරේට කවුරුත් ඇතුළු වෙන්නෙත් නැහැ ඉතින් මට පුරුදුයි මෙතන මෙහෙම ඉඳලා වැඩ කරන්න අපි සතියකට පාරක් විතර කවුරු හරි මොන ගැහෙනවා නැත්තම් මම මේ තනියම මගේ මගේ බිරිඳයි මායි අපේ ජීවිතේ ගත කරන්නේ සෝ ඇයි තින් අවුට් ඔෆ් දැට් Uh, loneliness of working on my own which is a weakness i was able to be more productive and so my childhood also was similarly a, a fairly lonely childhood i mean I, I, i i'm not an anti social person but i don't like crowded places and so on so that that's i'm trying to tell you a bit of the good and the bit of the bad things well, that sounds very interesting uh, but what made you choose uh, electrical and uh, electronics for your graduate work so uh, i had a problem that uh, my father uh, <clears throat> didn't really believe in the university system um because uh, he he felt that like i could be a tea planter for example and live a life like that but i had a friend who was going to be an electrical engineer uh, and whose parents were going to fund him to go to england and this was in the 1970s when there wasn't uh, when many people didn't go overseas for studies uh, but my mother's sister lived in england and she allowed, agreed to fund me and because my friend was going to be an electrical engineer and his parents are the ones who convinced my parents to let me go uh, i decided to do the sorry the same course as as he was doing so it was not a good decision uh, but i of course i succeeded in being that i think if I, i would have been as happy to work in in biology except that jobs in biology were hard to come by i think they're still hard for most people graduating from zoology even with a special degree these days to find a job is is tough it's a lot of dedication and uh, so I, i i know the challenge that students are going through uh, when they graduate in, in the sciences in general uh, whether as a physicist or biologist or a mathematician uh, to 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 find a rewarding uh, career is is difficult so i i faced the same challenge uh, and i became an engineer and after my postgraduate degree when i came back to sri lanka i found that i was the only biomedical engineer in the sri lanka in in sri lanka this was in 1981 and so for me to get a job was very easy and for me to get promoted in that job was very easy so by the time i was 25 i was already a director level in the government service uh, director of medical engineering for the ministry of health in charge of a whole department and a staff of about 150 people uh, as as a little kid basically at 25 so it was a huge opportunity for me and i i really enjoyed working in government so that's another point i must make about my career is that 
about half my career has been spent in government service in many separate blocks and about half in the private sector because I'm also a businessman. That's how I make a living um, in a, as, a, as a partner in a medical engineering company. I used to be, now I'm no longer, I'm retired. Um, and that's what paid for all the research and the work we were able to do because if I didn't work as a businessman, I wouldn't have been able to find the money or would have found it hard to find the money from grants and so on to get on with the research. It would have been additionally difficult because I don't have a qualification in biology, Devaka, though people treat me as a biologist now, I don't even have O-level biology. I had to learn everything myself because my subjects were physics and uh, double maths and chemistry for, for A-levels. So it was, uh, it was a tough thing to transform, mutate into a biologist. That's, that's what made you a good biologist because you didn't carry any additional baggage like we had to yes. through 12 years of school education. But what made you change, uh, change uh, from engineering to start working on fish? What was your fascination about fish? I had always maintained uh, aquarium since uh, I was given charge of my first aquarium when I was about seven with the two angelfish, two snakeskin gouramis, and two goldfish. I still remember that. This was in 1961, I think. Um, and I, uh, I loved maintaining this uh, aquarium. And uh, as the years went on, my parents built another aquarium for me on the estate on which we were, my father was working. Uh, and, and then I used to go around the local streams and catch fish and bring them for my aquarium. So I remember catching, for example, sword tails from Castle Ray Reservoir. It was full of sword tails and Belontia. The Belontia were eating the baby sword tails. Uh, and uh, in our local river, like uh, these little loaches, Shistura and Devarios and so on, and keep them in my aquarium. I had no idea what these fish were uh, called at that time. And one of them was discovered uh, to be a new species by somebody else eventually and described as Devario monticola. But I think uh, Devario monticola, or fish very much like it, was one of the fish I had in my aquarium uh, at that time. Um, so to uh, get into fish became a kind of thing with me, especially because I came into contact with Rodney Junkers when I was chairman of the Water Resources Board. And he was a great inspiration to me. And Rodney was a like, famous diver and outdoors person and also another wonderful man called Cedric Martinstein. So Rodney and Cedric were professional divers. They dived uh, catching aquarium fish uh, for some of their time. Um, and so they taught me the ropes of how to uh, collect fish underwater. So usually freshwater fish until then had largely been sampled by people netting them, but they taught me for the first time to snorkel and learn how to catch fish by targeting an individual fish and, and, and then discover it. So in the process of doing this, we discovered a lot of interesting things. Um, but then Rodney died when I was, before my book was published, he died. And, and so uh, that, that left me to pursue my work on my own until Callum joined me, I think in 1993 or thereabouts. And since then you have been responsible in at least uh, I wouldn't call it training, but you have shown the way to a large group of young people, some of them are very uh, successful professors today. How do you feel about that contribution? I, I, I loved working with them and I, I missed that. Um, and now that I'm at a certain age, now that I'm like, my, my children, many of the students now are younger than my children. So it, it makes it a very special bond for me. Uh, in, in, in some of these cases, I, I just can't differentiate between the young people I, I meet and work with today or help or collaborate with. And, and my own kids, I, I think of them the same way, which means I, I worry when they say we are going on a field trip, for example, I'm like, like a fretful parent, I'm asking, have you taken your warm clothes and all this kind of nonsense. So I'm getting, I'm getting to that age. But it's, um, it's, it's been wonderful. As, as you said, three of the people who worked with us at WHD are now university professors. Uh, there's Madhava, there's Anjana Silva, who's at uh, Rajarata University, and there's Kalana at Peradeniya. Kalana Madhava Gay. Uh, uh, astonishingly clever people. Um, and there's, there's many others who have uh, been working over the years. And uh, right now I'm working with a, a guy called Hiranya Sodasinghe, who uh, co-authored a, a book with me uh, last year on the biogeography of Sri Lanka and especially the freshwater fishes. So uh, this is this is an ongoing project, and 
I, I worry only that I, I won't live long enough to see enough students through into successful careers. I'd like, I'd like that, that excites me a lot to see these guys uh, doing good things with their lives. Yeah, in fact, you are the one who supported me when I came back when we started that Canada study. Yes. Got Fogger and, and that, that really helped uh, for me to start off my career. Yes. Uh, but uh, when I look at your work, I think uh, the most decisive piece of work you came up with was the amphibians. Uh, because after Keith Singh, no one has really taken much notice about it, but you came and turned tables and said, we could be having as much as 250. I remember that was the first time I met you actually in Kandy. We were at a meeting where you presented that paper and then Biju followed it up with the work in India. Um, would you call that the most decisive uh, point in your career uh, of, uh, you know, natural, the, the career of, of being a natural? Or oh, oh, what would you call the most decisive? Uh, um, yeah. yeah. Uh, so 250 species was a gross overestimate. We were over by 50%. Uh, but I'm not uh, ashamed about that because I think there was so much to be discovered that we, we like set out uh, the, the parameters for what there was to be discovered. And I think new amphibian species will be continue to be described um, because in the last uh, what in the last 10 years, for example, Mendes Vikramasinghe has been uh, doing some fantastic work and, and rediscovering some of the species that we thought were extinct because we hadn't found them, like uh, Pseudophilautus uh, stellatus. And, and so this has become uh, an exciting project for other people to follow on. Um, so when you ask me about decisive, I worry about that word because decisive can mean decisive good and decisive bad. And in my past, I don't think so much about the decisive good things, like the things that made a big difference and led to better outcomes. I think more of the negative things. I don't say negative because I'm critical. I'm saying negative like I learned lessons from bad things that happened. Um, and and uh, those, in a way, are also like uh, were important life lessons. So in, for example, I was working in government service in 1989. And uh, the, at that time, there were these curfews that were imposed by the JVP, the, the rebellion that was going on. Um, and they, they used to stop, tell the whole country to stop work and stay at home as, as a kind of general strike. But if you're working in an environment that is important to service to the people, uh, you go to work and, and in my, except when I was in the health ministry, after that, I've never even taken a salary for working in government because I, as a businessman, I had enough income. And so I felt an obligation to uh, report for work. And because I reported for work, um, my house was attacked. And, and uh, fortunately, we were not at home and we would, might have all been killed because they were killing many people at that time. So that was a decisive moment for us because we had to decide like, what do we do? Like, do we remain in Sri Lanka or do we uh, take refuge in another country? So as it was, we made a kind of uh, compromise. Uh, we took my family, my wife and two children to Australia and uh, settled them there. And then I came back and decided that I'm going to continue doing what I was doing with, with the government at the time. So in a way, that was a decisive move because it, it forced me to like think about career and that was the time I thought if I'm not if I'm going to do some research on something like fish, I better start doing it now. So at the in the early days of uh, my fish research, the first time I went to Lagala Palligama, for example, and to find what we now call Cystomus martinsteini, uh, which is a beautiful new species, I actually went with an army bodyguard with me uh, to in case there was some. Uh, problem. Not, not that I asked for it. I, it, was, it was given to me by the army because that, that was how it worked. So my field work in those days was done with a guy standing over me with a gun, which is crazy. Um, but now, looking back, I think that was a decisive moment because it, it, it forced me to confront the fact that it was urgent that I do this work with fish that I wanted to do. Um, so bad thing, but a good outcome. Yeah, I, I know what you mean. I feel the same way after 2009 when we started working in 
in Jasna, where we had to be escorted by military all the time. Yeah. Uh, but uh, I also know that you, you've tried a lot of innovative things, one of which I remember is uh, you tried to set up a biodiversity institute, which didn't come through. Uh, unfortunately, I, I thought that was a very, very useful thing for the country to have. So the, the question I had is, is what kind of challenges uh, did you face during your work that spans more than three decades now? Uh, if you would, uh, you know, educate us about the challenges and how did you overcome? And uh, that would be very useful, especially in the today's context because we live in a challenging time. Uh, so would like to know your thoughts about that. So, yeah, I think you brought up a good point, but I want to rewind that a little bit as to why uh, the instance that you gave uh, came about. So if you look at the 2020 red list of threatened species, I don't know, there are hundreds of Sri Lankan species that are listed as critically endangered. Uh, I think correctly so. Uh, and I think you have personally been involved in this process for what, the last 15 or 20 years. Um, helping to do the analysis and crunch the data and come up with these assessments. And I think the assessments are fine. In fish, for example, we have 12 that are critically endangered. In plants, we have almost 300 amongst flowering plants alone. Again, संरक्षणी <laughs> Panate, Palaveni, Waki, Pamanai Sandhan men. Eke Atula Kuhevat Sandhan men, Sangrakshane, Api Laba denai Kiela, Ape driver with that done it. Eka Durula come up. I think Mang Matavata in the theatre, Mang Kalpanakarane, may Ratulize to end readily staking Kissima Progen at Nakiela, Api again Kissima de Karaneta. I think then api api uh, api matsya sampata gattana api te inno kiyamu udaharanayak washayen bandula petiya bandula petiya me galapi galapita mada ekka poli dolakata simithai eka lankawata aawenika matsek loke wena kohewat nae e gamata simithai e game ayage aarakshawa nathuwa e e sata pawathinna numuth api uh, one G V Sangrakshana department we pet them beluot, Natang Api Sangrakshana Visheshaknyo Hati Baluot, E Prashne, Apata me Satagana ki Yamkisi Unandwa Dakon de Venone, Ekiane make a lace in Nativ and Pulang on the Vendapul and Kaudar Gila uh Vasatika Damanang e Dolata, Natandola Hindila Giana Mukakari uh Pyana Kalika Idori at Tibila. එහෙම ප්‍රශ්නයකට මොන දෙන්න සිදුවුණොත් ඒ සතා නැති වෙන්න පුළුවන්. නමුත් අපි විද්‍යාත්මක සංරක්ෂණ කලමනාකාර මැදිහත් වීමක් කරන්නේ මේ මත්ස්‍යයා ගැන. ඒක දුර්වලකමක්. අනිත් එක තියෙන්නේ අපිට දැන් ඉහළ පෙලේ conservation biology කියන විශේෂය විෂය මං හිතනවා දැන් ඉතාමත්ම දියුණුයි. ඔබතුමාත් දේවක ඒකට ඉතාමත් ඉහළ පෙලේ ප්‍රමුඛතාවයක් ලබා ගත්ත පුද්ගලයෙක්. ඉතින් ඔබෙන් අපට ප්‍රයෝජනයක් ගන්න බැරිද? මේ මත්ස්‍යා පමණක් නෙවෙයි. අපේ රටේ ඉන්න මේ CR critically endangered කියන සත්ව විශේෂ සිය ගණ ගණනට උන්ගෙන් ස්වල්පයක්වත් සංරක්ෂණය කරගන්න. ආරක්ෂාව පමණක් නෙවෙයි. නිකන් වැටක් බැඳලා මදි. අපි බලන්න ඕනේ තව අවුරුදු 50කෙන් මේ කොහොම තර්ජනයක් මතු වෙයිද කියලා මේ සතාට. අපි කැප්ටිව් බ්‍රීඩිං වගේ දේවල් කරලා අපි මේ සත්තු බේර ගන්න අපි යම්කිසි වැඩපිළිවෙලක් පිළිවෙලක් ආරම්භ කරා හිතුවේ. හැබැයි 
අපට වනජීවී සංරක්ෂණ දෙපාර්තමේන්තුව DWC එකට අපි අවශ්‍ය සම්පත් ලබා දෙන්න ඒගොල්ලන්ට ඉඩ දෙන්න conservation biology විශේෂඥයන් ඒගොල්ලන්ගේ ස්ටාෆ් එකට එකතු කරගන්න මම දන්න හැටියට හරි ටික දෙනා ඉන්නේ ඒ සංරක්ෂණ කටයුතු වලට අවශ්‍ය මුදල් හා වෙනත් සම්පත් ලබා දෙන්න අපි කරන්න. ඉතින් මම ඒ අවස්ථාවේ මම හිතනවා මම මේ 2001 2 වගේ කාලේ මම හිතුවා ලංකාවට අපිට ලබා ගන්න පුළුවන් නම් ජෛව විවිධත්ව පරිරේෂණ ආයතනයක්. Biodiversity Research Institute කියලා. ඒ කියන්නේ අපි දැන් ඉහළ පෙළේ අපි conservation scientist ලා අපි විශ්වවිද්‍යාලය වලින් උපාධි දීලා එළියට එනවා හැබැයි ඒගොල්ලන්ට ඒගොල්ලන්ගේ විශේෂත්වයෙන් ප්‍රයෝජනයක් රටට ලබා දෙන්න අවස්ථාව තිබුණා. ඉතින් මේ මේ වගේ ආයතනයකට මම රජයත් එක්ක කතා කරනකොට ආණ්ඩුවෙන් කිව්වා අපිට මේකට සල්ලි නැහැ කියලා. ඉතින් මම හිතුවා හරි මම බලන්න සල්ලි හොයා ගන්න. ඉතින් මම ලෝකේ වටේ ගියා මගේ මුදල් වලින් ගිහිල්ලා සල්ලි එකතු කරන්න බැලුවා. ඒ හොඳ අවස්ථාවක් වුණා. ඒ කියන්නේ අපිට 2001 අගේ අග කාලේ LTT එකෙන් ගැහුවා අපේ ආපෝට් එකට. මම හිතනවා ගුවන් යානා 10 15ක් විනාශ කරලා ඉතින් ලංකාව ගැන උනන්දුවක් තිබුණ ලෝකේ හැම තැනම අද වගේ නෙවෙයි. ඉතින් ඒ කාලේ අපි ගිහිල්ලා මුදල් ඉල්ලනකොට ගොඩක් අය කිව්වා. ඉතින් මම ඇමරිකාවෙන් ගිහිල්ලා අහනකොට මට එහෙ ඇමතිවරියත් එක්ක මට අවස්ථාව දුන්නා ගිහිල්ලා සාකච්ඡා කරන්න. එතුමිය කිව්වේ හරි ලංකාවෙන් අපිට ණය මුදලක් ගෙවන්න තියෙනවා ඩොලර් මිලියන 10ක් විතර. අපි හදලා දෙන්න දාන්න දෙන්න Did we lost Rohan? How long have I been lost? Uh, just about a minute. Yeah, <laughs> less than a minute. You're okay. Ah, uh, right, less than a minute. I, um, it's asking me something, and I'll uh, hang on. One minute. Okay. Uh, I was. I was. Did, did I start saying about collecting money for this? Yes. Yes. Uh, yes, yes. For the Biodiversity Institute. Okay. Oh, I think only matter. Abi. Abi. Who got the U.S. dollars? Uh, million. We see too much. Because in other year's leveling, rupees billion. I buy one. Rupees billion. Attack. I mean, we shall move the luck. Well, one. One of the action department. We have a large share of them. Pirivaya. Then it. මම හිතනවා බිලියන 7ක් විතර වෙනවා මේ මේ වසරේ. ඉතින් ඊටත් වඩා ගානක් මේ පොඩි ආයතනයක් වෙනුවෙන් අපි හොයාගත්තා. ඉතින් මම හිතුවා මේක බොහොම හොඳයි කියලා. අනිත් එක ඒ කාලෙත් අමුතු ආණ්ඩුවක් තිබුණේ චන්ද්‍රිකා කුමාරතුංග මේ ජනාධිපති වරය හැටියට හිටියා. රනිල් වික්‍රමසිංහ අගමැති වරය හැටියට. දෙන්නා එකට හිටියේ නැහැ. ඒ කියන්නේ කැබිනට් එකේ බේදයක් තිබුණා. ජනාධිපති වරය වරිය වෙන පක්ෂකෙන්. නමුත් ඒගොල්ලන් දෙන්නම එකක වුණා මේක අපි ඇති කර යුතුයි කියලා. ඉතින් දෙන්නම මේකට සහයෝගය ලබා දුන්නා. ඒකත් එක්කම කැබිනට් තීරණය ගත්තා මේක රටට අවශ්‍ය දෙයක් මේක කරන්න දෙන්න අපිට දෙන්න ඉඩ දෙන්න කියලා. අනිත් එක මේ ආණ්ඩුවේ වාසියක් තිබුණා. හැබැයි මම එක පැත්තක් බැලුවේ නැහැ. මට අර මගේ අර මං කියුවනේ මේ මං සමාජශීලී පුද්ගලයෙක් නෙවෙයි කියලා. මට මේක කල්පනා වුණ නැහැ. මේකේ මේක ගැන අනිත් අය අනිකුත් අය මොකක්ද ඒගොල්ලන්ගේ මතය මොකක්ද 
අත්‍ර වෙලා කතා ලියනවා අපි මේ ඇමරිකාවට සිංහ රාජ විකුණන්න බලනවා පෙතියගොඩ කියන්නේ ජාන මංකොල්ල කාරයෙක් මේකට ආධාර වෙන්නේ එක NGO එකක් තියෙනවා කන්සර්වේෂන් ඉන්ටර්නැෂනල් ලොකු විශාලම කන්සර්වේෂන් NGO එක ඒකේ සභාපතිවරයා ජාන මංකොල්ල කාරයෙක් ඒ වගේ මාධ්‍යවල එන්න ආව කතාව මේක ඉතින් මට උත්තරයක් දෙන්න බැරි වුණා ඒ කියන්නේ මගෙන් කවුරුත් ප්‍රශ්නයක් අහන්න නැහැ නිකන් පිටිපස්සෙන් කට කතා හැටියට මේ කියන්නේ මාධ්‍යවල යනවා පත්‍රවල යනවා කැලෑ පත්‍ර යනවා ඒ කාලේ මේ ඊමේල් එහෙම ටිකක් අඩුයි මේ දැන් දෙදාස් හතර දෙදාස් පහ ඒ කාලේ අන්තිමට අපේ ප්‍රධානම සංවිධානයක මේ රජය නොවන සංවිධානයක් වෙන ඩබ්ලියු එන් පී එස් එක ඒක හිටපු සභාපතිවරයෙක් ටෙලිවිෂන් එකේ කියුවා රස් මිටමාය ඩොක්ටර් රස් මිටමාය වන කන්සර්වේෂන් ඉන්ටර්නැෂනල් සමාගමේ ස ආයතනයේ මේ ප්‍රධානයා බ්‍රසීලයේ මේ වගේ මේ බයෝපයිරසි නඩු අක්කුඩ එතුමා ජාන මංකොල්ල කාරයෙක් කියලා එයාට කවුද මේ වීඩියෝ එකේ යැව්වා එයාට යැව්වම එයා කිව්ව නෑ එහෙනම් අපි ලංකාවට කිසිම ආධාරයක් දෙන්නේ නෑ කියලා එතකොට එයා ඒකෙන් අයින් වෙනකොට ඒ ව්‍යාපෘතයෙන් අයින් වෙනකොට අනිත් ආධාරකරුවෝ සියල්ලම අයින් වුණා එයත් එක්කම ඉතින් ප්‍රොජෙක්ට් එක නැති වුණා නමුත් මොකද්ද ඒකේ ප්‍රතිපාකය ඒ ප්‍රොජෙක්ට් එකට තිබුණ මිලියන විසිතුන ගියා ඉන්දියාවට ඉතින් අපට ලැබෙන්න තිබුණ ජෛව විවිධත්ව පර්යේෂණ ආයතනය දැන් තියෙන්නේ බැංගලෝ නගරේ ඉතින් ඒකෙන් අපට පේනවා සමහර විට අපේ පරිසරවේදී කල්පනා කරන විදිය ඉතින් ඒකත් දේවක මගෙන් ඇහුවා මගේ ඩිසයිසිව් මොමන්ට්ස් මොකද්ද කියලා ඒකත් ඩිසයිසිව් මොමන්ට් එකක් වුණා ඉතින් මං එදා තීරණය කරා මේ ඩබ්ලියු එස්ටී එකේ කරන තේරුමක් නැහැ කියලා රටට මේක තේරෙන්නේ අපි කරන දේ තේරෙන්නේ නැහැ කවුද හරි තේරෙයි හැබැයි මට ඉවසිල්ල නැහැ ඒ එදා වෙනකන් ඉන්නවා ඉතින් මං තීරණය කරා එදාම බහල දාන්න ඒකයි වුණේ ඒක මයිතන අපිට වෙච්ච ලොකු පාඩුවක් කියලා මොකද ඒ කාලේ පෑම් අපිට ග්‍රාන්ට් එකක් ඇවිල්ලා තිබුණ වර්ල්ඩ් බැංක් ප්‍රොජෙක්ට් එකේ මමත් වැඩ කරේ ඒ මමත් මම හිතන්නේ ඒ පැත්තෙන් ගොඩක් ඒකට අවශ්‍ය කරන ලිපි ගොනු සකස් කරලා දුන්නා මම හිතනවා අපිට ලැබිච්ච ලොකු පරාජයක් ඒක කියලා අපේ රටේ ඉතිහාසයේ දෙස බලද්දී වගේ පරාජය ගොඩක් තියෙනවා මම හිතන්නේ ඒ අය කිව්වේ වගේ ගොඩක් දේවල් අපිට නැති වුණේ අපි දුර දිග බලලා වැඩ නොකරු පුහුණුවෙන්ද ඔබ බන්දුල පිටියා ගැන මතක් කරපු හින්දා මට එකක් කියන්න ඕනේ අපි රිකවරි ප්‍රෝග්‍රෑම් එකක් කරා පොපුලේෂන් ඊයේ ඉඳලා දැන් දෙදහකට පමණ වැඩි කරගෙන මට අපිට හැකි වුණා අපි එකෙන් විස්සක් හඳුන්වා දුන්නා ඒ ළඟම තියෙන දොරකට එතනත් දැන් හොඳ ගහනයක් ඉන්නවා ඉතින් නමුත් මං විශ්වාස කරනවා ඔබ කියපු දේ හරි අපි දිගින් දිගටම පරිසර අමාත්‍යාංශ එක කිව්වේ अवसान कल्पना <laughs> මේක මට පෞද්ගලික වාදාල නෑ මම මේ අද අපිට අපි වැටිලා තියෙන අගාධය ගැන මට කලින්ම වැටහ වුණා මම හිතනවා දැන් අවුරුදු දෙකකට විතර කලින් මම පටන් ගත්ත මේකට සූදානම් වෙන්න ඉතින් මට පෞද්ගලිකව ප්‍රශ්නයක් නෑ හැබැයි රට ගැන මට වේදනාවක් තියෙනවා ඉතින් ලිනියන් මේ අදක්කම ගැන මට ඉංගලන්තේ යන්නත් හිතුන්නේ නැහැ ඇත්ත කියලා. මෙතන අපි මොන දැන ප්‍රශ්න බලනකොට අපේ ජනතාව විශේෂයෙන්ම අපේ ගම්බද ජනතාව දැන් බඩගින්නෙන් දරිද්‍ර සාවෙන් පෙලෙන ජනතාවක් අපට ඉන්නවා මම මේ මම හිතන අපිට සේරම රට මේක තේරෙනවා අපි හැමෝටම. ඉතින් මේ 
මේව ගැන අපි මේ ඔය ලිනියන් මෙඩල් එක ගැන අපි මම කල්පනා කරලවත් නැහැ ඇත්ත කියන්නේ මම ගෙදර ආවා ඒක මගේ වයිෆ්ට දීලා මගේ වැඩ පටන් ගත්තයි මේ ඒක මම හිතන්නේ මම කාටවත් මගේ දරුවන්ටවත් මම පෙන්වවයි කියලා ඇත්ත කියන්නේ මේ අපට ඊට වඩා බරපතල ප්‍රශ්න තියෙනවා දැන් මම දැන් ඒ වගේම මම දැකිනවා මම උපේගේ ජීවිතේ දිහා බලද්දි දකිනවා ට්‍රාන්සිෂන්ස් කීපයක් පළවෙනි එක තමයි ඉංජිනේරු එක ඉඳලා ස්වභාව විද්‍යාඥ කියන ඒත් මේත කාලයේදී මම ඔබගේ YouTube එකේ ගිය වැඩ සටහන් ගණනාව බොහොම ආසාවෙන් බැලුවා මට හිතුණා ඔබ ක්‍රියාකාරි එක එක වෙලා කියලා I think you turn into an activist how do you feel about that නෑ නෑ මම ඇක්ටිවිස්ට් නෙවෙයි මම මට විශේෂ දෙයක් තියෙන්නේ මම බලනවා අපේ විශේෂයෙන් අපේ තරුණ අය මේ අද මේ වැටසටහනට එකතු වෙලා ඉන්න අයට අපේ ජාතික ප්‍රතිපත්ති අපේ ජාතික සංවර්ධනය ගැන කල්පනා කරනකොට විවේචාත්මක චින්තනයක් ඇතුව මේ ගැන බලන්නේ කියලා ඒ කියන්නේ ක්‍රිටිකල් තින්කින් හැටියට හැම දෙයකටම දෙපැත්තක් තියෙනවා අපි අනිවාර්යයෙන් දෙපැත්ත බැලිය යුතුයි හැම හැම යෝජනාවකටම දෙපැත්තක් තියෙනවා හැබැයි අපි විශේෂයෙන් පරිසර ක්ෂේත්‍රයේ අපි අපි බලන්නේ අර ඍණාත්මක පැත්ත පමණයි අපි ධනාත්මක පැත්ත බලන්නේ මට අවස්ථාවක් මට විනාඩිය දුන්නොත් මං හික්මන්ට උදාහරණයක් දෙන්න මට මම හිතනවා දෙදාස් හතරේ මාව පත් කරා අර ඉහළ කොත්මලේ ව්‍යාපෘතියේ තිබුණ ප්‍රශ්නයක් ඒක අවුරුදු පහක් විතර කල් ගියා ජපානෙන් ලබන ආධාර වලින් මේ සුළු ප්‍රොජෙක්ට් එකක් මේ තලව කැලේ කරපු කරපු ප්‍රොජෙක්ට් එකක් මාව පත් කරා මේකේ අර පරිසර වොඩ් යු කෝල් ඉට් අර ෆෝ ද ඊඅයිඒ ටු ඩිසයිඩ් ෆෝ ද ගවර්මන්ට් වෙද ඉට්ස් අ ගුඩ් ඊඅයි ඔර බෑඩ් ඊඅයි මට ඒ ඒ වගේ ටාස්ක් එකක් තුන කරන්න මේ ඊඅයි එක ගැන වාර්තාවක් ලබා දෙන්න ඒ කියලා රජයට කැබිනට් තීරණයකින් මට මේක පවරා දුන්නා මේ ප්‍රොජෙක්ට් එක මං හිතනවා ඉතාමත් පොඩි ප්‍රොජෙක්ට් එකක් කියලා මේ ඒ ජලාශය මං හිතනවා ඉඩ ප්‍රමාණය අක්කර හැටයි අක්කර හැටක් කියන්නේ ඉතාමත්ම පොඩි ජලාශයක් ජලාශයක් කියන්නේ බෑ පුකුණක් වගේ නමුත් ඒකෙන් අපට වාර්ෂිකව ලැබෙනවා දැන් ගිගවොට් අවර්ස් හාර සීයක් ඒ කියන්නේ රුපියල් බිලියන දොළහක බිලියන දොළහක බයන්න බිලියන දොළහක විදුරිය විදුරිය වටිනාකම මම හිතනවා බිලියන දොළහක කියන්නේ ඒ පොඩි ජලාශය ඒ බලාගාරයෙන් අපට ලැබෙනවා කොළඹ විශ්වවිද්‍යාලයට වැය වෙන වාර්ෂික මුදල ඒ අතින් බැලුවා හැබැයි මේකට අපි අවුරුදු හතරක් ගියානේ පරිසර වේදීන් මේකට විරුද්ධ වෙලා කිව්වා නාය යෑම් සිදු වෙයි එතන තියෙන ජනතාවට තර්ජනය තිබුණ කියලා මේක අවුරුදු ගානක්ම ඇද්ද ජපන් ආදර ආධාර වලින් ආපු ප්‍රොජෙක්ට් එකක් තව පොඩ්ඩෙන් මේක කැන්සල් වෙනවා අපි හැබැයි ඒක වෙලාවට බේරගෙන දැන් අපේ ඒ ඒ ප්‍රොජෙක්ට් එක අපිට ලබා දුන්නා ඉතින් මං හැම ඔය හැම ව්‍යාපාරයකට හැම ව්‍යාපෘතියකටම විරුද්ධ වෙන පරිසර වේදීන්ගෙන් මං අහ සිටින්නේ පොඩ්ඩක් කල්පනා කරන්න රටේ සංවර්ධනය ගැන අපි ඒ සංවර්ධනය අපට අවශ්‍යයි මට අවශ්‍ය නැහැ හැබැයි අපේ ගම්වල ඉන්න දරුවන්ට අයිතියක් තියෙනවා විදුලි එළියෙන් ඒගොල්ලන්ගේ ගෙදර වැඩ කරන්න හවස පහන් එළියෙන් නෙවෙයි ඒ වගේ අයිතිකම් තියෙනවා ඉතින් අපි ඒගොල්ලන්ට විදුලිය ලබා දෙන්න ඕනේ අනිත් එක ඒ කාලය යෝජනා කරේ අපි මේ ප්‍රොජෙක්ට් එක මේ හයිඩ්‍රෝ ඉලෙක්ට්‍රික් පවර් ප්‍රොජෙක්ට් එක දාන්න ඕනේ නැහැ මේක මේ සූර්ය බලයෙන් කරගන්න පුළුවන් කියලා හැබැයි සූර්ය බලයෙන් කරන්න යනවා නම් ඒකෙන් ඉහළ කොත්මලේ ව්‍යාපෘතයෙන් ලැබෙන විදුලියට අපට ඉඩම් අක්කර එක් දාස් දෙසියක් ඕන වෙනවා තේරුමක් නැති වැඩක් නැහැ ඉඩම් අක්කර එක් දාස් දෙසියක් යොදවනවා නම් මේ සූර්ය බල ප්‍රොජෙක්ට් එක කරන්න මේ අක්කර හැටෙන් කරගන්න පුළුවන් වැඩේට මොකද අපි විරුද්ධ වෙන්නේ ඉතින් ඒගොල්ලන්ට කියුවට ඒක පිළිගන්න ඉතින් අපි අපේ පරිසරය නියාමනය කරන අධිකාරියට සීයේකට මම හිතනවා මේ යම්කිසි මේ අපි අවබෝධයක් ලබා දිය යුතුයි පරිසර වේදීන්ට ඉස්සෙල්ලම රටේ සංවර්ධන ඉලක්ක මොකක්ද අපේ පරිසර ක්ෂේත්‍රයට අදාළ වන ඉලක්ක මොකක්ද කියලා මේ දෙක ගැලපෙන්නේ නැති විදිහකට දැන්
තියෙන්නේ. ඉතින් ඒ හින්ද ප්‍රොජෙක්ට්ස් ගොඩක් කල් ගියා. අපිට දැන් තියෙන අර්බුදයත් ඒකේ කොටසක්. අපේම අපිම හදාගත්ත අර්බුදයක් නැහැ. Yeah, I couldn't agree with you more about the need for us to be critical thinkers, especially the younger generation, which brings me to my last question. Uh, what advice would you, because today you would notice that we have a large number of aspiring young zoologists, botanists listening to you, uh, and they are inspired by you. What is a piece of advice that you can give to the youngsters? So uh, for any zoologists or botanists who are uh, who are becoming graduates in that field, if, especially if they have done special degrees and if they are if they are motivated in that field, I would uh, urge uh, them to write. Uh, you don't need to publish uh, papers in high wire journals. Write at least Wikipedia articles. There, there are still many things for which Wikipedia articles are incomplete. Uh, there are very few tree species in Sri Lanka for which uh, endemic tree species for which there are Wikipedia articles. Uh, for example, bringing together the information on what the flower is like, because now photographs are available for all these things. At the, that's at the minimum level. At the maximum level, I would say do publishable research. Uh, this is not difficult to do. I give the example of the last medicine Nobel Prize that was won uh, by the Australian pair, I forget their names now, Devaka. They did research that could have been done in a district hospital in Sri Lanka. This was the people who discovered that uh, this helicobacter uh, bacteria is what causes stomach ulcers. Uh, this is uh, basically some uh, research that could have been done with a normal compound microscope in a small hospital lab. So. I think curiosity is the main thing. If you are curious and we are asking searching questions, uh, then I think uh, there are many interesting answers to be found. So I would urge people, especially if they're doing special degrees and looking to do postgraduate work, to start publishing as uh, soon as they can, and especially even before they leave university. I uh, made it a condition, the last student I uh, supervised or helped to supervise was, was Hiranya so the singer. And I think by the time he graduated with his bachelor's degree, he had about five or six publications already. Um, and like, I think that was a fantastic achievement. And it's, I, I would like to see every motivated uh, bachelor's degree, uh, special degree uh, holder coming out of university with a couple of publications under their belt, because that helps you then to leverage and get grants to go overseas for higher studies, for PhDs and so on, um, and, and build a, a much better career. So remember, you are a scientist, first of all, a scientist, and scientists have to publish, and scientists have to keep thinking of hypotheses that they will test. So if you don't do that, it's, it's very difficult to be a successful scientist. So my, my advice is don't go to taxonomy. Taxonomy is too easy. You, you are preparing these students, you're equipping them with much better skills to be doing the more difficult things and answering the difficult questions. So. Use your curiosity to answer difficult questions and publish the results. This is not expensive, it's not difficult, it's, and it's a starting point for a good scientific career. Thank you, Rohan. It's always a pleasure to talk to you as much as I would like to continue this discussion. I would have to turn you back to the, the question and answer session. So I'm going to ask Osma to come back and uh, start the question and answer session. I'm sure they will have lots of questions for you. Thank you once again, Rohan. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you very much, Professor Devaki Virkan, for conducting that interesting discussion. Okay, with that, I'm sure that by now, all of you have been inspired by this great personality. So without a delay, we'll now move on to the Q&A session. We already have received some questions via the chat box and the Google form that we shared with our participants beforehand. If you do have more questions, we request you to send them to the chat box for the person who has been renamed as questions. So we can direct them to Mr. Pityagoda. So sir, the first questions that we have received is, What are your plans in conservation for the future? 
Uh, I think the short answer to that is uh, right now, I'm not thinking in terms of any big conservation projects. Uh, there is one project I would like to start. Uh, uh, I'll just quickly describe it. Uh, there is a tea estate called Udaveria uh, adjoining Houghton Plains. Uh, there is this uh, devil staircase roadway that goes from near Belioloya up to Houghton Plains on the Ohia side. Udaveria is about 700 hectares and it's a very steep land. So the uh, NB NBRO has uh, de declared that they can't cultivate tea there any longer. So I would like to start a project by getting some international aid to uh, reforest this uh, 700 acres is a, is a uh, 700 hectares is a massive area to reforest but to reforest it and one day uh, join it up with Houghton Plains National Park if possible some work has already been done on this uh, by others uh, but so I want to help with that project uh, but that is just one small project on on the rest of conservation I'm not thinking right now I'm, my mind is focused on the economic recovery for the country I, I want to be involved in that because I think if you don't, if we don't have a country that is growing economically, there is no point in talking about conservation. People are not going to think about conservation. The, we need to fill the stomach first and then talk about conservation. Otherwise, even now, because there is no gas, no kerosene, people are cutting down forests for firewood, uh, for timber. Uh, this is going to continue. So we have to think about national development. Yes, absolutely, sir. Thank you very much for that uh, interesting answer. And the next question is, sir, uh, what are the ways that the general interested public and organizations can contribute in biodiversity conservation missions if they would like to work with that? Uh, I, I think one of the most, the, the best ways to set about this is to make sure that uh, enough people are getting information in Singhala. Uh, this is something we started in the 1990s, I think, with Professor Kotagama in 1994. For the first time, we published a comprehensive book in Singhala on the birds of Sri Lanka. Uh, that sold very well. And then he did a bigger book with uh, Mr. Garbani Ratnavira as the artist. And uh, Siri Laka Kurulu was a bestseller. I think more than 20,000 copies were sold. We gave one free copy to every school library in Sri Lanka. And this was almost 20 years ago. And still, when I go in the field sometimes and I see a kid with an old copy of Siri Laka Kurulu who's using it, I feel very proud. Of course, after that, there have been many books in Singhala on these subjects. But I think. Uh, Education and awareness building, especially in Singhala, because university graduates are equipped in both languages and you all have a big advantage because you can assimilate information in English and then uh, disseminate that in, in, in Singhala. So awareness uh, meetings are a good thing to do and raising funding for that. So for example, in Karnelia, there is a very nice facility, the dormitories there or in Horton Plains, and to take uh, senior school children on field trips uh, get them used to the idea of how to observe nature in a scientific way and and to have uh, fellowship and and uh, lectures uh, and uh, meetings with them i think is a lovely thing to do and if uh, you all are doing that and you all like me to help find some money I, i'd be happy to do that but i think that's really valuable that's a teaching is the best way to learn i think uh, professor devaka will agree yes of course so the next question is, sir, what do you think about the current status of biodiversity of Sri Lanka when it compared to the world? Uh, we are in a bad situation. Our population density is quite high. We are about 380 people per square kilometer now in the wet zone. It's about uh, almost 800 people per square kilometer. The wet zone is where most of our biodiversity is uh, concentrated. And our whole conservation and protection effort is focused largely on elephants uh, because of that uh, we don't focus on conserving for example dragonflies or small fish and, and things like this which might need more attention and are more, more unique to sri lanka than than large animals so i, I think our uh, the conservation of these animals is is in a critical state 
we are losing a wet zone forest at a at a huge rate and now because of the present problems the rate of forest loss uh, around uh, peak wilderness uh, autumn plains pidrutalagala hantana uh, knuckles and so on is is getting to be an unbearable rate of forest loss so we will see uh, many more species coming to be critically endangered and so i think going forward what i would like to see is putting more pressure on government to allow universities for example to get involved in actual conservation work How, devise a program like professor devako was saying like he's been doing for the bandulabab but there are so many other species also that need attention uh, so that each group of students for example can take care of uh, how to make a management plan and implement it for really threatened species, not just of animals, but also of plants, because there are many, many more plants uh, seem to have become extinct in Sri Lanka than animals so far, certainly vertebrate animals. So conservation here is in trouble uh, and it needs uh, a new Aragale from you, the, the intelligent young people to, to pull it out of this problem. Yes, thank you, sir. And our next question is, sir, as a developing country, lots of development projects are happening. So how can we balance both conservation and sustainable development, sir? So I, I think the thing is to be reasonable. And very often we haven't been reasonable. This is a problem that really bugs me. If, if there is one question that I stay at, awake at night thinking about it is this question you asked me how do we find this balance and how do we sell that balance to the people who are making decisions the people who are making decisions are not so much politicians they are people like you guys because you are the ones who will be out there protesting if you don't agree with something so i think informing uh, the young graduates who are in university and coming out of university about the real development needs of the country is very important. I'll give you a quick example. 22 years ago, some environmentalists went to the Supreme Court and they got a decision, a judgment from the Supreme Court prohibiting uh, any development work of the Epavala phosphate deposit. The, the problem with the Supreme Court ruling 22 years ago is that it confused two words. It confused the word Samchita with the word Sampat, reserves as opposed to resources. Then Nisa triple superphosphate ton laksyak pamana videsha so that is a massive loss to the country because we are desperately in need of fertilizer we have one of the biggest phosphate deposits in asia sitting right just down south of anuradhapura and for the last 22 years we are importing phosphates so this is a development problem that is caused by a group of environmentalists. But after that happened, I haven't seen any environmentalists going to the Supreme Court and saying, actually, we were wrong. We need this phosphate for our agriculture. We need this phosphate to export and bring foreign exchange. Of course, phosphate mining has environmental problems, but let's find out how we can get around those environmental problems. Because remember that even if you have to correct the environmental problems, that takes labor. And labor means jobs for our people. We need to find jobs for our people. So I'm, I gave that example just to show that in many cases, we environmentalists are responsible for holding back the development of our country and getting us into this situation. We have to get loans for everything because we don't allow our own resources to be used sustainably. So we need to think very carefully about how we measure this. Last year, I took another example. In fact, I spoke to the wildlife department about it because we have this problem of biopiracy. There are, there are people who we know are coming to Sri Lanka and stealing specimens. This is insulting because we used to be a colony and when people, especially white people, come and steal animals from whether it's dragonflies or butterflies or beetles, we don't like it. But it's not a serious conservation threat. But as a result of the awareness that we have built up, 
about this subject. Many tourists who come here when are interested in wildlife uh, are thought to be biopirates. So there have been cases where they, even a friend of mine who came and he was just watching people fishing uh, on uh, beside my house because I have a small canal here in Talavatabuda where I live. Uh, uh, ichthyologist friend from Singapore and a uh, man was catching fish and had them in a bucket and he went and looked at what the species were because they're ichthyologists. He was reported to the police. So we give a bad impression for tourists when we have this overhyping of this problem. Of course, we have a biopiracy problem. And of course, the, the people who come and steal specimens should be arrested. And like that last group was uh, fined, they should be fined seven or eight million rupees, quite right. But we should know where to measure that because we shouldn't do it in a way that harms genuine tourism because there was another tourist who was photographing monkeys, I think somewhere near Padukka, who got into trouble because they thought he was a biopirate. So this gives us a bad impression because these people put it on their blogs and so on, and then it, Sri Lanka gets a bad reputation. So we, we should learn to balance. I, I think this is the, uh, this is the, 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 the way forward. A bit of mayota namyashili pratijarekti like some kind of flexible in our, in our outlook, in our response. Okay, so thank you. That is very indeed. So there is another very special question that we uh, it, uh, it has asked from our audience. So uh, what is the next possibility of getting the Lost Biodiversity Institute back to Sri Lanka, sir, that you have mentioned earlier? I think for a long time, it will be impossible, to be honest, because we have a bad reputation with the international NGOs now. Um, the whole uh, international NGO system is operated, there are three large NGOs, World Wildlife Fund, Conservation International, and the Nature Conservancy. These are all America-based, and they're, they're huge. Uh, and we have a pretty bad reputation with all of them, because they talk to each other, and Sri Lanka is, is not in their good books. Uh, by comparison, IUCN is not big. IUCN is a federation of other NGOs. It's not an NGO in itself, so that's not enough. So there is a bigger need than actually an institute at the moment, which is our national debt. Uh, if you look up on the internet, you'll see the example of Belize, uh, the country of Belize in Central America. Uh, they also got into a similar problem like Sri Lanka, where they couldn't pay back their debts. So they did a thing called a debt for nature swap, uh, which is that uh, big NGOs come and uh, pay off part of the debt, in this case, $500 million for Belize, which is a lot of money, on condition that the Belize government put $25 million into conservation. Now, $25 million is a lot of money. It's about 10 billion rupees. So Belize had to uh, do something like that. And that was uh, done by the Nature Conservancy, which is one of the big three uh, international NGOs. Uh, but when I think we have approached uh, Nature Conservancy about doing something like this for Sri Lanka, they're like not so keen uh, because we we have got ourselves a bad reputation. So it will it will take some effort to get these people to engage again uh, with with our country. I'm I'm very sad about that. I'm very disappointed. And and you know the tragedy is the people who objected to this project at that time in in that period. Uh, you don't even hear about them today. Nobody knows even the people who went and got this judgment against a power because they do the damage and they disappear. So these are, I see them as traitors because like in the name of conservation, they go and cause huge damage to the national interest and then they just disappear. You never hear about them again. So I don't think we'll get the Biodiversity Institute back. It, it'll be a very difficult thing with the present economic environment, maybe another 20 years before you can even think about it. Okay, sir. And also we have another question related to the previous one. What would be the role of research scientists in realizing this dream? And is NARA delivering the same research output that was expected from it? Uh, sorry, who is, I didn't hear the last bit. Is, is who developing the research output? NARA delivering the... Ah, I, I don't know. I, 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 I'm embarrassed to comment about a particular institution. Uh, I. NARA used to be a, a research institution in the 1980s. I, I know they had a, a strong research interest. I don't know whether that is still part of their mandate because, you know, a lot of government institutions, uh, 
uh, can only do what the budget lets them do. So if the, if the finance ministry doesn't give them the money to do research, they can't do the research. So we can't blame the institution really. So I'm, I'm not sure about NARA. I, I don't want to go into that. Um, but, but I think the scope for research in Sri Lanka on biodiversity is just infinite. There's, there's no shortage of hugely interesting questions to ask. Um, this, this work that I mentioned, which uh, Hiranya Sudha Singh has been doing, for example, trying to understand how fish historically for the past several million years have been moving between the river basins of Sri Lanka using their genetics uh, has, has been fascinating because we've understood so many things. Like for example, when there have been droughts in the past, like all the rivers have dried up, where did the residual population survive? So it's answered like hugely important questions. And with climate change happening, we need to understand more about how our biodiversity is resilient to things like drought uh, or long periods without rainfall, decreasing rainfall patterns and so on. So the, the need for research is just infinitely big and it's not always expensive, it's, it's quite cheap. It, I don't know whether anybody from outside of uh, biology is listening today, but uh, something that's really uh, eye-catching research internationally is experimental psychology. And in Sri Lanka, the, we publish almost no experimental psychology. And this is the cheapest form of research to do with some of the most outstanding uh, publication possibilities in the world, because there is a lot of international interest in experimental psychology, just Wikipedia, the kinds of things that people are doing in other countries. And here we have a body of students in universities who are wonderful guinea pigs for experimental psychology uh, experiments, uh, who will give their time freely to, to do these kinds of uh, tests that lead to these fantastic publications. So th this is something I think that can be done in any science faculty in, in the world. And certainly I would uh, encourage even the zoo and botany students to look at doing some experimental psychology stuff with, with their colleagues. It's eminently publishable and you might really make some fantastic discoveries. So yeah, research is, is great. Don't stop thinking about interesting questions. So I'll give you a quick interesting question to think about. Why do human beings always have their meals together, whether as families or with friends? So just go home and think about that. That's something that's worth researching. Sorry, any more questions? Uh, yes, sir. we are receiving so many questions, but due to the time restriction, we'll move on to last two questions of this webinar. Uh, so uh, the audience would like to know if they are at home and how can we become part of the naturalist in the community as youth who are restricted to their home? So um, a fun thing to do is to uh, do some practical uh, skills development at home. Um, if you have a little garden, I think learning to uh, breed some butterflies is a fantastic thing to do, to learn what food plants they like and to encourage uh, something like breeding butterflies. Uh, uh, keeping aquarium fish for is, is something you learn a lot, especially if you try to breed them and bringing up the, the young ones, you learn a huge amount about biology by just doing these simple things that, that you, can, you can do at home. Uh, and the resources are now available freely on the internet as to how to feed young fish and how, how to learn about the different uh, kinds of needs that uh, fish breeders have. And these are useful skills to learn. Even interacting with a pet, training a dog to do uh, some fun stuff is something that will teach you a lot about animal psychology. So uh, I, th I think there's a lot you can do at home. There's certainly a lot I'm doing at home during this time when we're all stuck at home. Okay, sir. Those are very interesting. And we are, uh, uh, we are now moving on to the last question. So it is true that Sri Lanka is going through a tough time right now, which will surely persist for a few more years at least. So as a passionate scientist, do you have any suggestions on what a Sri Lankan scientist role should be in the present day? I think the problem that we are having today is entirely as a result of our being led by ideologies and not by critical thinkers. So I think to develop the skill to look at every problem from more than one point of view 
is a very important thing. So uh, <clears throat> I, I think if I put it simply, yeah, ඒකෝයන්න කවුරු හරි යමක් කියනකොට හිතන්න එපා එයා හරි කියලා. හිතන්න නැහැ එයා වැරදි වෙන්න පුළුවන්. අපි පොඩ්ඩක් මේක විමර්ශනය කරලා බලමු. ඉතින් මං යෝජනා කරන්නේ හැම ප්‍රශ්නෙකටම සරල පිළිතුරක් නැහැ. සරල සරල පිළිතුරක් තිබුණා නම් අපිට ලෝකේ ප්‍රශ්න නැති වෙනවනේ. ඉතින් අපි හිතන්න ඕනේ අපි කඩා වැටුනේ අපේ ආර්ථිකය කඩා වැටුනේ කොහොමද? අපේ සමාජය කඩා වැටීමෙන් වැටීමෙන් සිටින්නේ කොහොමද? ඒක දැන් අපිට පේනවා. පෙට්‍රෝල් ෂෙඩ් එකක් බැලුවා නම් රාත්‍රි ප්‍රවෘත්ති වල අපිට පේනවා මොකක්ද වෙන්නේ කියලා. ඉතින් අපි කල්පනා කරන්න ඕනේ අපිට මේක වෙන විදියකට කොහොමද කරන්න පුළුවන්. අපි වැරදුනේ කොහොමද? උද්ධමනේ මෙහෙම වැඩි වුනේ කොහොමද? අපේ විනේශ විදේශ සංක්ෂිත විනිම සංක්ෂිතය නැති වුනේ කොහොමද? අපි මේවා ගැන කල්පනා කරලා බැලුවා නම් අපි පේනවා අපිට පේනවා අපි කොහෙද මේක වරදගත්ත කියලා. කොහෙද මේ අපි මේක අනාගත්ත කියලා. මේක දේශපාලන ප්‍රශ්නයක් පමණක් නෙවෙයි. මේක විද්‍යුතකින් ප්‍රශ්නයකුත් වෙනවා. හේතුව මේ තීරණ ගන්නේ දේශපාලනයේ පමණක් නෙවෙයි. මහ බැංකුවේ තීරණ ගන්නේ දේශපාලකයෝ නෙවෙයි. මහ බැංකුවේ අධිපතිවරයා නැත්තම් එහෙ ඉන්න සේවක පිරිස. ඉතින් අපි දැනගන්න ඕනේ ඒගොල්ලන්ගොත් මෝඩ මිනිස්සු නෙවෙයි නේ. ඒගොල්ලන්ගොත් දැන් හිටපු මහ බැංකුවේ අධිපතිතුමා කොළඹ විශ්වවිද්‍යාලයේ මහාචාර්යවරයෙක්. ඉතින් එයාටත් මේක වැරදුනා. ඒක අපි පිළිගන්න ඕනේ. හැබැයි කොහෙද වැරදුනේ? මොකද වැරදුනේ? එයා මතවාදය මතවාදයක් නිසා නොමග ගියාද නැත්තම් එයාට තර්ජන තිබුණාද කොහොමද මේක වුනේ? ඉතින් ටිකක් ගැඹුරෙන් කල්පනා කරානම් අපිට හිතා ගන්න පුළුවන් අපි අපිට වැරදුනේ කොහොමද? අපි මේකෙන් ගොඩ එන්නේ කොහොමද කියලා. ඒක තේරුම් ගත් ගන්නේ නැතුව අපි නිකන් ප්‍රාර්ථනා කරන එක මදි මේ අපේ ප්‍රශ්න නැති වෙයි කියලා. අපි ප්‍රශ්න නැති වෙන්නේ නැහැ. අපිට තව පරම්පරාවක් යනවා මේකෙන් ගොඩ එන්න. අපි මොකක් කරත් මේකේ මේකෙන් හදිස්සියෙන් අපිට ගොඩ එන්න බෑ. ඒක අපි මතක තියාගත යුතුයි. මේකෙන් ගොඩ එන්න පුළුවන් ඔබන්නේ අපේ ශ්‍රමයෙන් පමණයි. මම මේක නිතර කියලා තියෙනවා මේ YouTube channel එකෙත් ශ්‍රමයෙන් පමණයි අපිට ගොඩ එන්න පුළුවන්. අපි ශ්‍රමය කියන්නේ මොකක්ද? අපි අපිට සියල්ලට වැඩ කරන්න තියෙනවා. අපිට දැන්ටමත් තියෙනවා රජයේ නිවාඩු 26ක් වර්ෂයකට. මොකටද 26ක් ඕනේ? වෙන කිසිම රටකට නැහැ. ඉතින් අපිට අපි දැනගන්න ඕනේ මේ නිවාඩු ප්‍රමාණය අඩු කරලා අපි වැඩ කරන වෙලාව වැඩි කරලා දැන් අපිට කොහොමටත් වැඩට යන්නවත් බෑ ඉන්ධන නැතුව ඉතින් මේකෙන් ගොඩ එනකොට අපි මතක තියාගන්න ඕනේ එහෙමයි අපි ගොඩ එන්නේ කියලා. සාර්ථකව සංවර්ධන වෙලා තියෙන රටවල සිංගපූරුව වැනි රටවල ශ්‍රමයෙන් පමණයි මත ඕනේ. ඒගොල්ලන්ට වෙන ක්‍රමයක් තිබුණේ නැහැ. ඉතින් වැඩ කරන්න සූදානම් වෙන්න තරුණියනි ඒකයි මම ඔබෙන් ඉල්ලා සිටින්නේ. Thank you very much, sir. So with that, we conclude the Q&A session of this event. From the beginning up until now, all of you have been first-hand witnesses of hearing the life story and listening to the experiences of this humble naturalist that surely can add much to your life in making a huge difference as well as in making yourselves nature lovers. Dear sir, in appreciating your dedication and countless effort in making this world a better place words are not enough however in truly appreciating your achievement and for taking your valuable time to join us today we like to present this is more to of appreciating a drawing made by one of the members of botso srini rupa singh however as we cannot hand this over to you physically right now let's look at the wonderful portrait done by srini
Wow. Thank you, Srini. That's so kind of you. That's fantastic. My, my wife will be very jealous that we don't have one of her now. <laughs> so we'll uh, hand it over as soon as possible physically. Uh, if we can, we'll do it by her. Yes, of course. Sir. That's very kind. Thank you. Okay. Really appreciate it. Thank you very much, Srini, for that amazing portrait. Okay, moving towards the end of today's event, I would like to invite the Secretary of WhatsApp, Ms. Tapti Rupa Singha, to the vote of thanks. Thank you, Ayesna. I hope I'm audible. Yes, you are. Okay, uh, good evening, all of you. I'm Tapti Rupa Singha, Secretary of Botanical Society, University of Colombo. It is a great pleasure for me to deliver the word of thanks at this webinar, The Making of a Legacy. On behalf of the Board of Officials, I would like to take this opportunity to thank our guest speaker, Dr. Rohan Petiagoda, for his valuable time, the knowledge, experiences that he shared with us. We are extremely privileged to have you here today, sir. I think our audience got the maximum benefit from today's webinar. Once again, thank you, sir, for being the resource person of today's webinar session. And also, I would like to thank moderator of the session, Senior Professor Devaka Veera Khan for his support and guidance. I would also like to take this opportunity to thank Senior Professor Upul Sanadara, Dean of the Faculty of Science, Senior Professor Preeti Udagama, Head of the Department of Zoology and Environment Sciences, Dr. Hashendra Katriarachi, Head of the Department of Plant Sciences, academic and non-academic staff members of both departments. This session would not have been possible without the effort of Dr. Inoka Pereira, Senior Treasurer of Bees, Dr. Anushka Vikramasurya, Senior Treasurer of Botsok, and Dr. Hiran Jayavira, advisor of Cosmedia, and executive committee members and all the members of BEES, WhatsApp, and Force Media. So I would like to thank them all. Finally, I would like to thank all the university students from University of Colombo and other universities and all the participants who attended today's webinar. Thank you. Uh, thank you, everyone, Ashma, Srini, Tapti, and everyone at Bees and Devaka. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Ryan. Thank you very much, sir. So with that, we have reached the end of this memorable talk. Even though the past cannot be changed, the golden advice and the inspiration that we received today from Mr. Rohan Petyavada will drive us to make a better world tomorrow. We hope. The making of a legacy truly inspired you to become another legacy of true nature lover. Thank you very much, all of you, for joining us to witness this lovely evening. And with that, I conclude today's webinar. Stay safe and courageous during these troubles and times. As always, never to forget, protect nature. Even the smallest efforts matter. Have a nice day.